There is an interesting phenomenon that I've noticed here in Brooklyn since having moved here that I don't see back home in Southern California ever. And that is people take their belongings when they're done with them and they just kind of collect them up, dump them on the sidewalk outside of their home in the hopes that people will come by and just pick them up. It's almost like people have their own personal yard sales, okay? Like on any given day, you can just kind of walk the neighborhood and you can find yourself furniture pieces, clothing, accessories, like pots and pans, just random knickknacks that you might need for your house. I picked up a pair of kids' shoes the other day because I'm pretty sure I can just kind of clean them up real quick and I'll flip them on eBay really easily. So stuff like that where this is definitely something that I wouldn't see just getting thrown out from back home, but here this sort of activity goes down quite often. And I was thinking about why this sort of thing happens around here and what causes that. And I came up with three reasons why I think this sort of thing goes down. First one is just it's just very practical. People understand that there's enough foot traffic that goes by on any given day that you're gonna get someone somewhere that is gonna find your trash and take it as their own newly found treasure. Second reason also very related to the convenience factor is uh, a lot of people don't drive around here and it's just very inconvenient to park your car, load up your stuff, drive it to the nearest donation center and drop it off like you would back home. Whereas here, you don't really have that convenience factor of being able to collect your stuff up and easily take it over, transport it to a donation center. Third reason, uh, I believe that there's a strong sense of community around here. Uh, I think about you know the design of Southern California neighborhoods. It's just not conducive to the type of thing where you can just leave your stuff out and someone will pick it up. I think here, there's a strong sense of community and I genuinely believe that people have it in their minds that they're doing a service to their neighbors. They're like being a friendly neighbor by giving their stuff away to someone who could use it more than themselves. It's almost like you're doing an act of service to someone by giving away your, th your like lightly used stuff that you know that your neighbor, your fellow neighbor can use. And I don't think that's the mindset that people have when they're living in neighborhoods in SoCal. If I come across more in the coming week, I'll definitely uh, capture them and share them on the vlog here. I just find it to be very interesting. Just slap up a free sign, throw your junk out on the sidewalk, and by the end of the day, cleared out. This apartment that I'm living in, I estimate that it's about 100 to 150 square feet. It's very tiny in here. Just look up 100 square foot apartment and then just look at the images. That's like a good estimation of what this space is here. Uh, so it's very tiny and something that's like uh, interior design 101 is they tell you that placing mirrors, multiple mirrors around your place can help to give the, the feeling of a more expansive room. And so what I did is I went on Ikea and I ordered a couple of mirrors last week and this week was the arrival date. First mirror, this is a very tall, I think it's six and a half feet by about three and a half feet wide. That one is the Hovit mirror from Ikea. Uh, in the world of mirrors from Ikea, this is a very popular one. I just wanted a really tall mirror, like a full body length mirror for the place. Mirror number two, I wanted this one to go, there's a gap between my two windows and I wanted this one to be mounted in that gap. And I think this one more or less just helps with that whole feeling of making this place feel bigger than it is. Okay, as I was, I was about to assemble the mirror, but then I realized that it doesn't come with any hardware at all, like mounting hardware to mount the thing up, which makes no sense because for a mirror like that, that is the, for a mirror like that, it's literally the only way to uh, hang the mirror because it's like, because of its shape, you can't really do anything else with it. Um, so I'm gonna try to find drywall anchors some screws and 
for the larger mirror, I want to get one of those uh, like furniture straps just so that it doesn't tip over. And then I should be good to go with setting up the mirror situation. You know, when you first move into a place, you start with the very, very basics, right? Like you need a bed, desk, cleaning supplies, food supplies. But beyond that, it's all the kind of extra stuff that you can take your time with. And I feel I'm starting to creep into that territory now. Okay, I got all the hardware that I needed. I just came here to Lowe's. I got the hardware and then they had some plants on sale. So bought three plants. It's hard to do all this without proper tools, but um, I installed both of the mirrors. We have two mirrors in this place now, and I feel this does help to enhance the size of this very tiny apartment here. Last night I watched the movie Turning Red. I wanted to watch Turning Red anyway, but um, next week I'm making a video for React about the movie Turning Red and they don't make us watch the thing that we're making videos about. But for me, it's like, I was gonna watch this movie anyway. It's just like, I would rather watch it now so that when I'm going into making the video, I have an understanding about what I'm making the video about. So last night, during my free time, I spent the evening watching the movie Turning Red, the Disney Pixar movie Turning Red. Um, that's all I have for this week. Thanks very much for watching. I see snow starting to come down right now. It's starting to snow. It's been week number 601. Have a good week, and I'll see you next week in week number 602.